the dog should have a graceful arch of neck, its length balancing the size of the body and allowing the head to be carried erect. A short, thick neck or an exaggerated long neck detract from a balanced appearance. The neck should blend smoothly into well-laid back shoulders, which is more readily visible on this clipped down dog. The upper arm is angled back so that the dog stands well over his feet. From the side, note that the elbow is directly below the highest point of the withers. The distance from the withers to elbow equals the distance from elbow to ground. Because of the Tibetan Terrier's profuse coat, be sure to feel with your hands to ascertain actual structure. From the front, the chest is heavily furnished. As the rib cage descends, it narrows slightly, giving the forelegs room to work freely. The forelegs are straight and strong. Pasterns are strong and slope slightly for shock absorption. This dog is out at the elbows, making him toe in, which is not desirable. The Tibetan Terrier foot is unique and is a primary breed characteristic. Large and rounded, the foot is effectively flat. You can feel that there is little or no arch. The Tibetan Terrier must stand well down on his pads. There should be no sign of a dog being up on his toes. This is alien to Tibetan Terrier type, as are cat and hare feet. Pads are strong, with plenty of hair between the toes. Remember, the Tibetan Terrier must stand down on his pads, not up on his toes. Two basic functions of this foot are its bending ability to aid grasping and its snowshoe effect. The foot differs in structure from the snowshoe foot of Arctic breeds, but performs the same function, letting the dog work easily in deep snow. However, this is also a flexible foot, which was basic to survival in Tibet. The trait is seen in present-day Tibetan terriers, who can both climb trees and easily walk along tops of fences. This foot structure also affects gait, as we will see later. The Tibetan Terrier's structure provides for power, speed, and agility. The body is compact and powerful. Because the Tibetan Terrier is required to work hard under high altitude, low oxygen conditions, he needs excellent lung capacity, which requires adequate rib spring. The mature dog is well ribbed up, and the brisket extends to the top of the elbow. The length of the body from point of shoulder to root of tail equals the height at the withers. This gives the dog room to turn quickly and move with flexibility. The top line is level, with mature dogs showing a slight arch of muscling over the loin. This weak top line dips in the middle. A roached back is also undesirable.